pouring it on the base and walls as quietly as possible. Eventually, I came back to where I started and stopped. This was it. There's no coming back from this. I lit a match from the book I had and tossed it into the gasoline. It immediately and spread around the house in a circle, too hot for me to even stand near. I walked back out into the yard and picked up the bottle of bourbon. The fire was beginning to catch on the walls now. Uh, I took one last swig of it, stuck a rag down its spout, soaked it a little, lit the end, paused for one last moment, then threw it through a window of the front of the house. It exploded inside and cold the room and landed in with flames. I stood there for a second, taking it all in. Then I heard the screams. Kayla had finally woken up. The door before me barked as she ran into it, trying to get it open. I jumped back in a moment of brief shock. The doorknob shook and turned, and there were bangs, cries for help, then nothing. There was nothing for a few moments, and then a glass shattered on one of the windows. Kayla's arm came through, slicing on one of the shards of glass left. Help! Help me, please! Call 911! I stood in silence. The windows were old. I noticed them on my first trip here earlier today. So old, in fact, that they were four pans of glass separated by a thick wooden cross. Can you imagine? Can you imagine doing this to somebody, though? Just to stop a curse? I wouldn't be able to live myself. I'm sorry, man. Like, I wouldn't even be able to do this. I can't. Which would need a good deal of force to break. Attempting this, however, would smash the glass surely. Causing the escaping smoke near the window to be choking and, and unbearable. She was trapped. I stood long enough to hear the screaming stop. The hay was still blazed. Tossed in the cordless drill. An empty gas can. Then left. When I reached my car, I got in and sat down. I turned the key in the ignition and drove off. I've never known silence like I have in that moment. When I was a few miles away, what I considered a safe distance, I stopped on the side of the road, parked, and turned the car off. I sat there for a while, minutes, hours. I didn't know how long. Then I realized I didn't know why I was even waiting. What was I waiting for? Should there be a sign? Some sort of signal? How do I know that what I did worked? I frowned and looked around the car. I didn't feel different. I was still tired, but I'll be damned if I was going to sleep right now. Is this it? I said aloud, not expecting an answer. And not getting one. Frustrated, I ran my finger through my hair. Took out my phone and called Ely. It rang twice, and he picked up, sounding doozy. Hello? Dozy? Dozy? I think it's dozy, isn't that? How you pronounce that? Hello? Ely, hey, it's, uh, it's Jeff. Jeff, he sighed. Are you all right? I paused. Yeah, yeah, I said. I did it. It's done. There was a long silence between us. You did what you had to do, Jeff. Again, I didn't know what to say. I picked out Aben's diary from my passenger seat and began flipping through the pages mindlessly. I just wish there was some other way. I finally said, Well, I could have buried you alive. You could see managing a small fake laugh. Huh, <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, we didn't have to. I stared down at Aben. It being starry in disbelief. Jeff? Ely said. I didn't understand. The lines of his journal reading in my brain over and over. June 4th, 2026, 2016, sorry. I met today with Ely, an African history professor who lives in Natchez, Mississippi. He lives alone in a small farmhouse on a large plot of land. Lives alone? Jeff? Are you there? Yeah, I choked out, say, Ely. How's your wife? He lied about all that? What the fuck? She's doing fine, he chuckled. Happy to have me home, that's for sure. My heart was going a mile a minute. This can't be happening. It can't be. Ely? I began. Yeah? You don't have a wife. There was a long silence, and then I heard him smile through the phone. No, Jeff, I don't. And he hung up. Why, 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 why? That's a shitty cliffhanger. Not a shitty one, but like, what the fuck? So wait, what is he? I'm so confused. Is this guy like... Is this guy behind it all? Or was he a part of it? Oh my god. What the fuck is going on? Damn it, now I wish that there was a part 8. Shit. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Oh my god, though, dude. I like to know what happened to Ely. Like, did he just, like, take off somewhere and get over the country? Like, what the hell happened? Like, after, like, Jeff found out that he don't have a wife. Is Jeff gonna track him down? What's gonna happen? I hope you guys enjoyed that video, though. As always, stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.